Brock Purdy, who is now 7-0, mm -hmm. of course, as the starting quarterback for San Francisco. They only have the best offense in all of football since he became their quarterback, uh, taking over for the injured Jimmy Garops, who took over for the injured Trey Lance, who's never going to play it down for San Francisco the rest of his uh, entire NFL career. Which brings me to Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan was talking uh, somewhat glowingly about uh, Brock Purdy from where he started on the practice squad and why he actually got on the roster. What he's alluding to there is if you leave a guy on the practice squad, he's a uh, free game. Yep. Uh, any team can come claim him. Uh, for example, that's how uh, the New York Giants got Hodgins. They uh, became their best wide receiver. Mm -hmm. They took him off the Buffalo Bills practice squad. So you can't protect the guy on the practice squad. And that means at some point, you know, the kid showed something that made them go, we don't want to lose him because you never know. Yeah. Obviously, Trey Lance getting hurt, I think, expedited their decision-making on Brock Purdy because I don't think there was another NFL team that was like, huh, let me go get Brock Purdy, you know, for my squad because nobody knew who he was. He was the last guy picked in the draft. Which brings me to a question, you know, I could say on one hand he wasn't missed because he got drafted. On the other hand, based on how we've seen this kid play, Akuta was a four-year college player, not a two-year player or a three-year player, a full four-year college player. So maybe you know more mature, older, all those things that come with playing all four years in college. And now we've seen what the kid's doing at the highest level. Why did so many teams make that mistake in not recognizing the talent that he had? Because everyone's typically looking for that prototypical quarterback. Mm -hmm. You want size, you want hand size, you want speed, you want physical attributes that right. sometimes aren't there with some of these guys like Drew, Ble Drew Brees and the Brock Purdy's of the world. And when they go to a, a bit of a smaller school and they outperform, it's like, well, we don't know. We don't, tr we can't trust the competition that they played against when I, I've always looked at that as the foolish, the most foolish thing ever because the guys that – I was a mid-major guy. I went to Western Michigan University, played at the MAC. Right. I was – I got recruited by other schools. But my goal was to be in the NFL. Like, my drive was much – like, I was more passionate, had a greater work ethic than most of these guys that are at these bigger schools because I was behind the eight ball, because yeah. I had to do more. You know what I mean? I totally get like, it. Like, the guys who are have it laid up, I'm not saying they don't work. Right. But they don't have to do as much as a guy like Brock Purdy. So they don't have that grit, that grind, that resilience that he has in doing it for four years and still being told, you know what, we'll take a chance on you, but right. you'll be the last guy in the draft. Got it. But it shows work ethic uh, means a lot. Even at that level, you know, it's how you stand out. And maybe yeah. going to Western Michigan got you on the field sooner yeah. than you would have gotten on the field at Michigan, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, here's the craziest thing now about Brock Purdy and the way the sports media is. And uh, I always uh, find it objectionable and problematic. Uh, the Athletic, which does a really good job covering sports, yeah. uh, if you decide you want to pay for sports information, which I don't, uh, just as an aside, <laughs> uh, I just, uh, what, I'm like, yeah, I mean, like, well, I'm paying for, no, I'm not. Uh, for right, me? like, I mean, it's on you, uh, never mind. Uh, <laughs> You need photos. I just can't stand the concept of paying for information I can get by Googling it. Yeah. Anyway, The Athletic put out yesterday a anonymous, alleged uh, NFL scouts handicapping of Brock Purdy when he was coming out in the draft. Did not test well, limited athlete, maxed out body, mature and experienced, threw it okay, weaknesses, saw it off. Uh, I assume that's his throwing motion. Mm -hmm. Not a very good athlete, limited on both in strength and throw repertoire. Two words, no interest. Wow. I think that's Fugazi. Yeah. I don't think that's an actual, uh, you know, uh, draft report about him. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because unlike most people who just read something and go, okay, I'll just take it for granted. I do research. I have researched every official draft analysis of Brock Purdy coming out of Iowa State. And there's not a single draft report that doesn't have him as a legitimate NFL quarterback with great arm strength, throws the seam pass better than most college quarterbacks, uh, and all the things that you would look at, intangibles, that would make him maybe not a star, 
but certainly a guy that should be drafted. Matter of fact, one of the foremost uh, draft uh, sites in America said he's a late second round draft pick. Wow. All right. So the notion now that we're going to put out this anonymous, alleged, bogus, not connected to any team or any scout draft report is comical to me because I can read 13 different draft reports and I did. Every one of them says he's an NFL quarterback. Hmm. Yeah, that what we what you just read was completely opposite of what we're seeing. Like there is no and I'm not saying you can't make progress like this, mm -hmm. but there is no way I can look at Brock Purdy and say that he was that just a few months ago. Right. Coming out. Yeah. There's ridiculous. no way. That's Absurd. yeah, I'm and I'm not there. sure if that's because we live in this weird world now where I want to become the story as opposed to I just want to cover the story. And it doesn't matter anymore. Anyway, Brock Purdy is a starting quarterback in the NFL who is going to make a lot of money, especially, especially yeah, if he does it. what, unfortunately, my main man, Mark Sanchez, could not do. And that is, as a rookie quarterback, get to the big game and win it. You know, Joe Flacco and Mark Sanchez – are the only two other rookie quarterbacks to win multiple playoff games. Mark, of course, went to back-to-back -back AFC championship, uh, championship games, and Flacco ultimately, as you know, won a Super Bowl mm -hmm. and for like 13 seconds became the highest-paid quarterback in the entire league, in the league's history, mm -hmm. when uh, he uh, won the Super Bowl. But, man, Brock Purdy's a win away. He's a win away really from uh, doing something that nobody else has ever done. And I'm rooting for the kid. I am too. I am rooting for that kid. And I think San Francisco's going to have no problem going into Philadelphia whoa, with whoa, Brock whoa, Purdy whoa. and taking care of business. Because remember, <clears throat> on problem. one side of the field, you have a finalist for Coach of the Year. On the other side of the field, guy's not even nominated. <laughs> You're really happy about this, aren't you? Yeah, they came out with the three finalists for NFL Coach of the Year. Brian Dable. Nobody argues that, right? No question. Yeah. All right. Kyle Shanahan, third-string quarterback. He made it to the NFC Championship game. No one's going to argue that. Now, the third guy, is it Nick Sirianni? Is it going to be Big Nick? Or is it going to be somebody else? And guess what? It's going to be somebody else. It's going to be Doug Peterson. It is not going to be Nick Sirianni. Do you want to know why? Why? Because Philadelphia had the easiest schedule oh, in the entire NFL. And had they not won the amount of games they won, he probably would have been fired. They would have because won Because it is the easiest schedule. No. They have played nobody this year, and we're not going to reward a coach for beating a bunch of pancakes all year. <laughs> Are we Greg Jennings? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not going to go that far, but you can't. You can argue that Nick Sirianni should be a finalist, but when you look at what Doug Peterson did, I mean, this is a Jacksonville Jaguars team that was 3-14. and 14. We saw right. what happened and transpired with Trevor Lawrence and uh, Urban Meyer. That just blew up, and they make the playoffs? Yeah. Year two, the progress? I mean, to me, the obvious two choices are either Dable or Peterson. Yeah. I wouldn't even give it to Kyle Shanahan. He's got mad talent Absolutely. all over the field. Yeah. I would give it to the two guys Agreed. that made the playoffs when there were no expectations to make the playoffs. So look, Nick Sirianni has done a very good job. Yes. But if he doesn't make the playoffs, <laughs> the entire year was worthless. Hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1, so check them out too.